Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. And let me tell you, today's episode is truly about flourishing. My guest today is somebody who I am just getting to know, and it's important that I get to know her, and really important that you get to know her too. She is Fanchon Stinger. She is my co-host here on Morning on Merritt Street at Merritt Street Media. I will tell you this. I learned things about Fanchon today that I didn't know, and she was willing to be vulnerable and to be real and to share a lot of depth in her story in order to make an impact. And that's why she and I are both attracted to this business and what we do is because we want to make an impact and feel that whatever we share can uplift, inspire, or make somebody not feel alone. And I think you will feel that way with today's podcast. Hey everybody, let's talk about Bond Charge. Have you heard of them before? They're a holistic wellness brand and they have a huge range of evidence-based products to really optimize your life in every way. I know you guys have seen those red light face masks. I personally love the one by Bond Charge. It really helps with fine lines and wrinkles. That was my initial use for getting it. But did you know that it helps with sore jaw, eczema, if you have headaches, it can help with migraines, acne, scar tissue, the list goes on and on. It's like one device to be able to help with so many problems that we have. Head on over to bondcharge.com slash over 50, use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. I love my Jenny Kane sweaters. They are the perfect classic sweater. They are timeless. I've got some in neutral colors. You know, they're the first things that I grab in my closet. It's kind of the no fail cashmere sweater. They feel great. They look great. They're a closet staple. And it's just, it's not about trend. It's about what am I going to wear and feel comfortable in and not want to take off the first thing I get home? So, hey, why don't you find your new uniform or home decor piece at JennyKane.com? Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. 15% off your first order. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com. Promo code Dominique. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Ladies, are you wanting thicker, fuller hair? You want a product that's natural? You want to do hair regrowth at home? Let me introduce you to Vegamore. Thanks to them, sticking to my hair routine has never been easier, and I'm actually getting results that I have wanted. Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free. They are never formulated with harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. Comes in a little jar with a dropper and consistency is key to really get that thicker hair that you're looking for. Hey, elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, just get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash over 50 and use code over 50 at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash over 50. Code over 50 to save 20% on your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash over 50. Code over 50. Banshin, oh my gosh. I <laughs> Can I just tell you how much I have enjoyed getting to know you just over well, the past couple of days that we've been together? Thank you. Likewise. It's yeah. been magical, really. Yeah. And when you say that, it's not just words, because the, no. from the moment we were able to meet face to face, I feel like there was this instant. Yeah. Energy. Sisterhood, energy. Yep. And even other people noticed it. So yeah, it, it's well, real. And here's, <laughs> and here's the amazing thing. So we united under... I would say some unusual circumstances because our first day to meet was the day that we had a photo shoot and a promo shoot. So y'all, let me tell you. We jumped right in the pool. <laughs> we did, but it's <laughs> it's kind of weird because it's, you know, A, we're trying to get to know each other, yeah. but at the same time, we have to act like we've known each other and have this connection and yes. this chemistry. And it was 
it was so unique because to me it was sort of unraveling all in the moment. It was like a combustible moment. And organic. And organic. Yeah. But authentic. I know. Which to me is the most precious thing. Agreed. Because a lot of times you can be thrown into a situation like that and you're really having to pretend, like you said, but we, we didn't have to. No. You know? And I feel like there were so many little breadcrumbs that the Lord laid before us, preparing mm -hmm. us to meet. Because we kind of had a unique opportunity to know of each other. Yes. Um, and I think that was divine. I agree with really. you. Really. And it was funny because we would, <laughs> we would really just sort of get entangled in these conversations. And they would be like, okay, you two, you two, come over here. We, we need you to do this. And we're like, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. So I, I think there's more of that to come. And, I, and I'm excited for that to actually come out on air in our yeah. in our morning show together. And we yeah. will have so many rich and wonderful opportunities for the audience to get to know us yes. um, and for us to be a part of the storytelling as well. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I wanted you here today, yes. first of all, just to be able to celebrate you and introduce you to my audience yes. and have everybody get to know you better. Um, and I have to start with the name because everybody's going to be like, whoa, <laughs> that name is the coolest ever. You were, you were destined to be a broadcaster with the name Fanchon uh, Stinger. Well, thank you. And yeah. I have to first thank your audience because there are yeah. so many amazing people in your audience who yeah. reached out to me. I love that. And some of them we have in common. We know each other, yeah. but a lot of them were so gracious and so loving. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you to your audience for welcoming me yes, um, and being so gracious and um, being so loving. So that mm. is first and foremost. Thank um, you. But I always say to people, yes, Fanchon is my real name, yeah. first of all. Um, it's French, Fanchon, oh, that's the way you would pronounce it. Right. Um, and it means freedom. Oh. And I always thought, okay, Lord, why am I named that? Because mm. our names are significant, yes. right? Our names have meaning. And I couldn't figure it out. I'm, is it like... Am I a free spirit? Mm. You know, I know I am very patriotic. Yes. So I'm like, well, maybe that's part of it. And I prayed about that for a while. And the Lord finally revealed to me what it was. I've been through a lot of, um, I've been on a lot of mountains, but I've mm. been through a lot of valleys in my life. Yeah. And through that experience, what the Lord showed me is that, Fanchon, I have freed you mm. of so many of these things that could have dampened who I created you to be, right. but I have freed you to now trust in God alone. Mm -hmm. And so now every time I hear my name, it reminds me, you are freed mm -hmm. to now trust in God alone, free of those things that, can, that we all as ladies deal with in our lives, the insecurities, the yes. doubts, um, the striving, whatever that is, um, the comparison or trying to be, or I'm introverted, so, you know, growing out of, of that shyness that I was of a little girl. Yeah. But I, he has freed me of so many of these things that could have dampened. Um, and now I can live truly free with so much peace and so much unspeakable joy. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about that because, you know, names can be so significant. And now sure. I realize they are so significant because anytime someone says that to me now, they are proclaiming mm -hmm. that I freedom. am free. Yep. Freedom. And then when you talk about our country and the freedoms that we have and how important and how blessed we are to be here, it goes into it too, I believe. So. Yeah. I, you know, what a great story because usually when you ask somebody about their name, they'll say, well, it comes from my grandfather or my mm -hmm. family history or my origin. And so it's, it's tied back into that. I love how you have identified the significance and the meaning of your name. Yes, it is of French origin, but you're yeah. saying this is a moniker that establishes who I am as a human and yes. signifies my journey yeah. and my story. Yes. Now, you said it's French and Fanchon. Is there a reason why it's pronounced Fanchon instead of Fanchon? That's just how my family pronounced it. Pronounced it. Yeah. Um, and I, it's so funny because I asked my, I asked my parents, I'm like, why did you name me this? Like, we, I was looking as I was on this journey, but my mom was like, why? And my dad's like, well, we, your mom just found it in a book, and we thought it was a great name. I'm like, okay, there's got to be more, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, Fanchon is just how my parents pronounced it, and they yeah. were like, that's how you're, you are to pronounce it. And then when I meet people who are French, I always ask them, that's how I know now how to pronounce it. So, so that's another commonality that you and I share. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Y'all, it is so, so weird, but it it's is. wild. It is. Um, my name is French as well mm -hmm. and was found in a book oh by my, my mother. God. Oh, my God. I wonder if it's the same book. 
Well, it was Ayn Rand's uh, The Fountainhead. Okay. And Dominique Francon oh, yes. was the heroine in The Fountainhead. And my parents were both Ayn Rand followers, and they said, Dominique, Dominique. that's it. I love your name. What name, what book did your name come from? Name Your Baby. <laughs> Name your baby. I have baby. the book. My parents still have the book. Seriously? Mm-hmm. And I and I can see where my mom circled. started and circled the name. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's kind of what I did with styles. <laughs> was was one of those. I had like three baby name books, <laughs> and I kept going through and going through. And it's hard because you want something I think unique for yes. your child, yes. but there's that fine line between unique and weird. Yes, <laughs> right. There is. Because remember, they've got to own it and grow up with it. And and I thought, you know, styles. What a cool name. Yes. And it was spelled either with a Y or an I. And it's a British origin, oh, and it means okay. tall ladder. And I thought, hmm, that's hmm. very significant. And so naturally, being my kid, I had to go with the Y version <laughs> of instead of the I. But I love name origins and, yes. and what they mean. They are and, significant. And they are very, very significant. Very significant. So your name represents freedom. And you know, you and I have, again, very similar journeys professionally so similar. and personally. And personally yeah. So... I want you to share your journey with everybody. We'll start with the professional side first. Okay. Because, you know, we both have been in a similar industry for a very yes. long time. Yes. You're from Michigan. Michigan, yeah. So tell us about your start and, and why you wanted to get into this business. That's a really good question. I, um, when I was in 10th grade, I had to do a project. And I'm going to really shorten this for sake of time, mm. but we can go in depth and details at another time. But um, I had to do a project on my chosen career, and I had no idea what mm. that was going to be. It was either going to be law medicine, or some type of business. Right. And as I started looking deeper into those careers, I realized I didn't feel the call there. Um, and I grabbed a, grabbed a book about careers. Mm-hmm. And I flipped this page. And I remember three things that said, um, have a positive impact on your community, tell people's story, mm-hmm. and the opportunity to travel. That's immediately something inside here. It felt like butterflies were dancing. Yeah. And at 15, I didn't realize the significance of that moment. I can now tell you that was God igniting in me the purpose and the passion that he had ordained for my life. Now, with that being said, like I mentioned, I was very introverted. I was very shy as a young girl. I did not talk a lot in school. I had a fear of talking because I just didn't have the confidence. And on the outside, I played the piano. I swam. I... I, um, I competed in roller skating, figure roller skating. I did all of these things. Mm. I got really good grades, went to amazing schools. But then on the inside, there was an inner struggle going yeah. on. And yeah. I didn't understand, well, how can I do this? I didn't have the confidence internally. And from that moment, God put people in my life and in my path mm-hmm. and helped me come up with a plan to overcome that and to enter this career of journalism, which for me, why did I want to get in? Because I wanted to tell people stories. Right. I wanted to make an impact. Um, I have a dad who is a servant of people and, ta- you know, teaches young people how to in- be inspired and dream big. And my parents taught us that. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to emulate that, but I wanted to do it si- in a significant way in terms of what did God have for me on this earth? So that's my why. Yep. And, um, Academically, when I went to college, the academics of it, go blue, University of Michigan, by the way. (laughs) National champions, yes. Okay. So, um, but academically, it was not a challenge. That gave me Mm -hmm. the freedom Mm -hmm. to be able to focus on building my confidence and challenging myself to do things that were not comfortable, but that were preparing me to be in this role. So I will kind of skip forward. Every door that opened, um, I had a mindset of feel the fear, do it anyway. So as you know, we work overtime. There were no nine to five jobs. You pay your dues. You do the little grunt things that you have to do. But that passion is what drives you. It's Mm -hmm. the why. It's to make a significant impact, to serve your community. Um, I started mentoring young ladies at that time in my life when I first started my career. So that's always been a part of my career. What I learned later was this, being an introvert and being shy The most uncomfortable place for me was a platform, Mm -hmm. being in the public Mm -hmm. eye. As you know, we give up that privacy when we step into a career like this. And what God showed me is that that is why I wired you that way, to protect you from becoming intoxicated with the attention, Mm -hmm. from being intoxicated and impressed by the people you're going to meet. It was a protection, looking back at it, from so many of those things that can happen in a career like this that can really become a negative, if that makes sense. Totally. But also, I I see it in your life as a way for God to operate, to help 
develop you in an yeah. area where you were struggling. Yes. And so it's interesting he that he sparked a fire in you yeah. in an industry that would actually cause you to have to unzip and open up and get really, really uncomfortable yeah. and challenge you in that way. Yeah. And he, he works in those ways. So and many it's, beauty, it's, beautiful moments. It's true. And it's yeah. interesting to see. So we're going to take a real quick break. Um, thank our sponsors for supporting Over 50 and Flourishing. My guest today is Fanchon Stinger. She is my co-host for Morning on Merritt Street here at Merritt Street Media. She is an absolute delight and a love, and I'm so glad you're getting to know her. We've got more on the backside of this break. Hey everybody, let's talk about Bond Charge. Have you heard of them before? They're a holistic wellness brand and they have a huge range of evidence-based products to really optimize your life in every way. I know you guys have seen those red light face masks. I personally love the one by Bond Charge. It really helps with fine lines and wrinkles. That was my initial use for getting it, but did you know that it helps with sore jaw? eczema. If you have headaches, it can help with migraines, acne, scar tissue. The list goes on and on. It's like one device to be able to help with so many problems that we have. To use the red light face mask, it's only a 10 to 20 minute commitment really each and every day. So easy to use. You can do stuff while you have it on. Watch TV, scroll through your favorite social media. Hey, listen to an over 50 and flourishing podcast, right? Again, it is a great way to help with those lines and wrinkles, zero EMF radiation, no flicker, sleek and lightweight design, one year warranty, and you've probably tried other brands, but they do not compare to Bond Charge. Head on over to bondcharge.com slash over 50, use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com slash over 50 and use coupon code over 50 to save 15%. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. I love my Jenny Kane sweaters. They are the perfect classic sweater. They are timeless. I've got some in neutral colors. You know, they're the first things that I grab in my closet. It's kind of the no fail cashmere sweater. They feel great. They look great. They're a closet staple. And it's just, it's not about trend. It's about what am I gonna wear and feel comfortable in and not wanna take off the first thing I get home? The other thing too, they have so much more than just beautiful sweaters. They also have a stunning collection of home essentials, timeless furniture pieces, cozy pillows and throws, decor and beautiful candles. And they've got an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase and joining is absolutely free. So hey, why don't you find your new uniform or home decor piece at jennykane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique at checkout. 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code Dominique. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. Welcome back to Over 50 and Flourishing. We are flourishing here on yes. this podcast today. My guest is the beautiful Fanchon Stinger. She's my co-host here at Morning on Merritt Street. Such a lovely lady. And, you. you know, we're getting to know each other just as you are getting to know yeah. her. This is a very unique experience. You know, we... We got our positions here at Merritt Street Media yeah. very quickly. Very, and like literally very literally, quickly. Literally. And both made a very impulsive, quick decision to say yes and to be here. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in this podcast okay. as to how we arrived to this unique, interesting place in our lives, very unexpected, yeah. unplanned, yes. and extremely divine, as yes. you and I both would agree. Yeah. But when we got into the commercial break, you were kind of walking us through the yeah. start of your career yeah. in Michigan and how you had a calling to do something that felt so outside the box and unnatural yeah. for you. So talk about those early days in your career, yeah. what that was like, and, and you know some interesting nuggets and pearls of wisdom. Well, you know, I had no idea the journey that God had set me on. Mm -hmm. I could have never imagined it. Yeah. Um, and I talked about being, you know, introverted and so many young ladies and so many of us ladies struggle with those, that confidence yeah. or the insecurities or whatever that is. And that can permeate how we approach life and how we approach decisions and how mm -hmm. we approach, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. But one of the things I learned through those early days is that um, if you allow yourself or f challenge yourself to really step into your fear and mm -hmm. make your fear your strength, 
God will meet you there and help mm-hmm. you do that. So um, I remember the first day <laughs> that I, um, my first job, actually I had three job offers coming out of college. Two of them were in the financial sector, if you can imagine that. I, was, I did not have a financial degree. I had a double major in English communications with a emphasis on political science. Yet, I had a job offer from IDS Financial Services wow. to become a consultant in their Wall Street office. And then I had another offer from a corporation called the May Corporation in fashion, which I love fashion. Yeah. They wanted me to work with shoes. I love shoes too. <laughs> so it was like- That's this, a whole other podcast, yeah, by the way. a whole other podcast. Yes, it <laughs> okay. is. So but I say this because um, those were the two offers. Mm-hmm. And then there was a third offer that someone was going to create. It was a, um, a mentor of mine was going to create a position for me at a mid-market level news studio. Okay. He said, I can't bring you in as on air because you're just graduating from college, but I can create an opportunity for you as a paid intern. Okay. So we're looking at fifty to sixty thousand dollars to start here and ten thousand dollars to start mm-hmm. in the media industry. And my dad told me something that was so wise and that I always share is that you have to go with what you feel God is putting on your heart. Mm-hmm. So I went with that ten thousand dollars a year because right. I knew if you're good at something and if you're called in that area it's going to be quick. okay, and you will grow, and the money is not the issue, yeah. it's the impact. So I, my job was to work from 5 to 1, editing tape and editing copy for yeah. the morning news. Then I would stay late, and I would work, and I'd come in on the weekends, and I would practice my stories. I would mm-hmm. do my interviews. I would write a story and have a story for my boss every Monday. The very first day that my story aired was a significant moment because it meant that I had conquered this fear, right? Mm-hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm in the grocery store and this lady walks up to me and she says, oh, my goodness, you're that young lady I've been seeing on the news. Dominique, it was not until that moment that I realized, uh-huh. oh, wait, people are looking at me. This is a public thing. Yes. Which had I had really processed early. Would have freaked you out, I think. Would have. I probably may not have even done it. Yeah. But isn't God, he has the most amazing yeah. humor. Because it wasn't until that moment that I realized, but that was a significant moment because by that time, my confidence had grown enough yes. and my passion for what I was doing was bigger than my fear. Mm-hmm. So that set me out on this journey where I was there for four years. Then I had this idea that I wanted to be in a top 10 market and I wanted to go to my hometown of Detroit. Right. Everyone told me, no, you're too young, you're too this, you're too that. The door opened, the right person was there to give yep. me that opportunity and I went and I was there for 11 years. Um, and I have been able to step into so many incredible moments in history, mm-hmm. incredible moments in people's lives when they've been celebrating the highest highs, but also when they've been walking through the lowest lows. Sure. And it's in those moments, as you know, that is our decision whether or not personally we are going to allow our heart and our head to mm-hmm. get invested in people's lives. And that has been the most rewarding thing yes. for me is to be able to walk alongside people, no matter what that experience is, to be at ground zero mm-hmm. and to cover the tragedy of that, to have, you know, to have a dad standing in front of you crying, hoping and knowing and hoping and praying his child was going to walk out of that, but knowing that child was not coming out, yeah. to put your microphone down and pray with that father, mm-hmm. to be able to be put in those positions, to have that type of an impact. It, is, it was more than a career for me. Yes. It was somewhat of a ministry in a way. It sure is. Because you're helping people experience hope, joy, walk through pain, Mm -hmm. walk through tragedy. However that looks and however you're called to do that, I was called to do that in a very specific way. Um, So with that being said, you and I have talked about the responsibility that comes with a platform like this. Mm -hmm. And seeing what has happened to the industry as a whole (laughs) has been very disappointing. And it has been very difficult to walk through for both of us. but I feel like now, because we were faithful mm-hmm. with our ethics and mm-hmm. our integrity during these last few years, yep. the Lord's going to use those experiences now on a bigger platform to step into people's lives and have even more impact. So I don't take yeah. that lightly. And, and that's part of the reason I started my nonprofit is because it takes courage. Mm-hmm. And our young ladies need to be equipped with courage to lead well in life but also lead well professionally. And it doesn't matter where you come from or your background. We want all young ladies to understand that you do have what it takes inside you. We're going to help you get there, but you're going to have to develop grit. Mm -hmm. The name of it is grit and grace, but in the courage to lead yourself well first. Yep. And then be able to lead others. Yeah. And it's, it's beautiful to see, you know, you had this initial stirring 
to be a mentor. You know, that was something that happened early for yeah. you. And and that is something that you were able to carry through in your role as a news anchor. And I didn't understand the significance of it at sure. the time. But it's extremely powerful. And and whether it's done via on air, whether it's done, you know, behind the scenes, like mm-hmm. I would bring in young women yes. to the station with this, me yeah. and shadow yeah. and, and all of that to, to just show and to give an insider's perspective. Yeah. You know, my my dad had such a great expression. And it is last shirt has no pockets. Mm. Meaning when you're gone and you're buried, don't don't take things There's with nothing. you. Don't yeah. stuff it in your I pockets. Let it go. Purge yourself of things, of wisdom. Share it. Yes. You know, what is the point of keeping things so in? True. And that's something that always stuck with me. And and like you, we've we have found unique ways to to do that, to pay it mm-hmm. forward, and and to make a difference. Um, you touched upon this too, sort of being the uh, the salmon swimming against the current mm-hmm. in an industry where the current has really driven the messaging in a certain direction. Yeah. And you and I, as women of faith, um, I, I'd say as women of very strong moral conviction. Mm-hmm did not necessarily agree with all the decisions that were being made and, and struggled with it and fought with it and sort of tried to put up our best fight in. And I think it's for us, it's not about agenda. We never got in this business. It's not about my beliefs. And I, I always say this, you know, viewers will ask me, well, how do you feel about this? And where do you stand in the war against Ukraine? And are you, are you Republican or Democrat? I will never, ever, ever say where I align, because my opinion doesn't matter. When we're in that role, our opinions don't matter. Do we have opinions? Of course. Absolutely but we do. part of being a professional is learning how to leave that outside the door yes. when you walk into the door. This is the basic foundation of journalism that has been so lost, sadly, is sadly. that in this country, we have so many amazing freedoms. Mm-hmm. One of the foundational freedoms that we have is to make educated decisions with a free flow of information. But once, it has to be factual. Exactly. But once you have an entity mm-hmm. that is omitting information, misusing information, mm-hmm. reporting information intentionally that is not factual or has a narrative or motive behind it, Correct. now you're removing people's freedom mm-hmm. to make fully educated, educated decisions. decisions. <laughs> right. And we have people who have made decisions that are affecting their lives, that will affect their lives Mm -hmm. based on information they thought was complete and factual, and it was not. And where you and I really have, we've talked about this, is that that goes to ethics, it goes Mm -hmm. to morals, and it goes to integrity. I am accountable for what I say and don't say to one person. To God. And I have to answer to that. Mm -hmm. So it became very difficult um, because I wasn't going to go along with the narrative right. and either were you, but yeah. there were consequences for that too. Yes. Um, and I prayed a lot about God, what do you want me to do in this situation? I believe the Lord had me see a lot of things so I could understand the depths of what mm-hmm. was happening. But then I made a commitment to stay until he told me I could leave. Yeah. Cause I, you know, we, I wanted to leave a couple times. Me too. <laughs> I'm like, no, Lord, I will wait until it's your perfect timing. And I did. And thank goodness, because he did have a plan. Yes. And he did have, and look at where we are today. We're sitting next to each other. But had I may have been premature in some of those decisions, Mm -hmm. I don't know what that would have done. But when the Lord finally released me from that particular situation, um, I had learned a lot and I'd seen a lot. And um, maybe one day we'll get a chance to share some of those details. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, but yeah. whenever he says it's the right time, we'll do it. Then we will do it. Exactly. And, and here's the other interesting thing. So you were in Detroit. You then went to Indy. Mm-hmm. Um, you worked for the same. Was was Jerry your GM there? <laughs> Jerry was the, my GM who brought me to Indianapolis because right. I had no interest in going at first. Yeah. And they brought me in. I had a great conversation with him. I loved the way he thought about the media. He included us as talent mm-hmm. in the business side of yep. the station. And I felt after meeting him and the news director at the time, Lee Rosenthal, I felt God pulling on me to say, you need to be in Indiana. Mm-hmm. So I had made a commitment prior to that, that God, whenever you tell me something from now on, I'm, I'm going listening. to listen. Because I have in my life, yeah. I have not listened at times. Sure. And I have had to pay some very harsh, traumatic consequences. Mm-hmm. And we'll get into that another day. Yep. But with that commitment came, okay, I have to go to Indianapolis. I don't know why. I don't know a soul there. I cried the whole way. Mm -hmm. But it was the most 
pivotal and important thing in my life at that time because it transformed not just me professionally, but it transformed me personally. And mm -hmm. most importantly, it, it deepened my faith to a point that I never knew was possible. Oh, that's interesting. And my friendship with Jesus, my friendship with the Lord, that would not have been had I, had, had I not been in Indianapolis. Hmm. What was it about that that deepened your faith? Um, I was newly married. Mm -hmm. um, after I got there, I got married a few week, a few months later. So my um, husband didn't come until after our wedding, a few months later. And a year and a half into our marriage, um, everything fell apart. Mm -hmm. And I learned at that point that he was um, chronically unfaithful. Uh, and he had some issues that would require me to lean on my faith and lean on people that God put in my path in Indianapolis in a way that had I not been there, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. I'm sorry. And I probably, it's, you know, yes, it was a hard time and I wouldn't wish on anyone, but yeah. coming out of that, and it was a seven year wilderness period in my life. Is that how long you were married? I was married eight. Eight, okay. A little over eight years. Um, and my ex husband had some very serious um, issues with pornography that yeah. led to chronic unfaithfulness. And I had no idea what that world was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what came, I, that was just not anything that was in my experience, realm of experience. Right. Um, and Why should it be? Exactly. <laughs> and I learned so much and literally the people who were gonna walk me through that period of time were in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And God brought each and every one of them. And I get emotional because had it not been for God's providence and his love, but once you see how far God will reach out of heaven mm -hmm. to hold you up, to support you, I, I walked through that seven-year period without a single person at my job knowing what I was going through, sitting on the set some days, fighting back tears. Right. Um, but my church came alongside me and walked me through every valley, every emotion. I went into such deep biblical counseling that's when I began to understand what God had in that for me mm -hmm. and why he had me walk it out for seven years. Because when it was finally over and he released me from that, I was able to walk away with such deep peace right. and such deep joy because I knew that I was obedient to him, to what, how God called me to walk through that at every detail. Mm. You know, um, And everyone's journey is different. So it was seven years because God had... a. A journey for me in that and I was um, all I knew was everything fell apart and when everything falls apart a lot of times that is where God can do the biggest and most impactful the deepest 100%. work in us yes and um, that's what transformed my life and, and that was it was a, that was it, that was at that point there was a series of things that led me to be able to tr to trust in that moment you know here's the interesting thing that I find in all of this you're going through such a personal struggle, and yet you live and work in such a public industry, yeah. you know. And and as as we grew in this business, this business grew, and there was this incredible push and pressure to have this online presence, right? Mm -hmm. And not just online, as in just post stories. And we were having a conversation mm -hmm. about this yesterday. Not just posting stories, but posting about your personal mm -hmm. life. You know, sharing mm -hmm. who Finch and Stinger is, mm -hmm. letting the audience come in and get to know you. Mm -hmm. So, how did you how did you walk that? Because, <laughs> I mean, I know I personally. The pendulum for me swung too far the other way. I, I've always been kind of an open book. So I'm like, come on in. Mm -hmm. Here's my life. Here's mm -hmm. my world. Mm -hmm. This, you know, mm -hmm. you're in it too. It became a part of my mm -hmm. YouTube platform. And when my personal life imploded, it did so on a very public forum. And mm -hmm. I not only had to go through that journey personally, which mm -hmm. is gut wrenching, mm -hmm. but also publicly. How on earth are you? And we'll 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 touch on the backside of the break because. I know this answer is going to take some time, and we've got to um, okay. thank our sponsors, but I'm just so curious as to how you walked that walk and that struggle yeah. and did so privately in the public sector. We'll be back right after this. Ladies, are you wanting thicker, fuller hair? You want a product that's natural? You want to do hair regrowth at home? Let me introduce you to Vegamore. Thanks to them, sticking to my hair routine has never been easier and I'm actually getting results that I have wanted. 
Vegamore products are 100% cruelty free. They are never formulated with harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. Comes in a little jar with a dropper and consistency is key to really get that thicker hair that you're looking for. You can put it on basically at nighttime before you go to bed or let's say you take a shower in the morning and you can apply the Vegamore drops to your scalp rub it in, apply your product, go ahead and style and grow. I mean, go. Yeah, I'm talking about grow because that's what the hair serum is called, Vegamore Grow. You wanna stay consistent? You can sign up for a three month supply of the product. That way you will never ever run low. Hey, elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, just get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash over 50 and use code over 50 at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R.com slash over 50, code over 50 to save 20% on your first order. V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash over 50, code over 50. Welcome back to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. My guest today is the one and only Fanchon Stinger. She is my co-host here for Morning on Merritt Street. This podcast is a huge help, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I, we get to know more about her. You guys know everything about me. She and I can have that private conversation later. <laughs> um, we were having a very intimate and private conversation before this commercial break, just about enduring and going through mm-hmm. a really deep personal trauma yeah. of you know, being married, for seven years to somebody who is acting outside the marriage and clearly has an addiction issue Mm -hmm. with pornography, as you mentioned. Um, And my question to you was, how did you handle that, being in the public eye? You, You know, you alluded to the fact that the only people who knew were, you know, your church community, people you enlisted your troops to rally around you, but that you showed up at work and, mm-hmm. and you were able to make that division. And I'm assuming, you know, how were you handling the whole online experience at that time as well? And, and here's the thing. Don't you feel sometimes like a fraud having to sometimes put out and maybe project certain things that might not necessarily be going on? Or did you just simply not go there? How did you do it? That was, that's a really good question. How I did it, it was the grace of God. Mm-hmm. And it was the strength of the Lord literally carrying me every day. And I got to a point where I woke up and I was like, okay, Lord, what's going to be the lesson today? How are you going to show me today that you love me so much, that you're with me and I'm not alone? Mm -hmm. And he did that every single day. (laughs) And so did I feel like a fraud? No, because the reason why there had to be so much protection around me and around what was happening was because I lived in the public eye and I was so fragile in that during that time Mm. that I couldn't have handled much more. Our jobs, as you know, are very intense and we have to be there for people. One of the beauties of what God did with me and taught me during that time is it would have been so easy for me to go into self-pity, into depression, Mm -hmm. into so many of those things that can really be so heavy. But God during that time put in front of me so many other people who needed me Mm -hmm. to encourage them. They had no idea that I was breaking inside, but I was in my Bible every day. Mm -hmm. The Lord was teaching me. I was experiencing him hold me up, carry me through. So the same scripture I would read in the morning to encourage myself, now someone's sitting in front of me, they're in tears, they have a crisis in their life, they have no idea, but it forced me to repeat what God was teaching me to them. And there's something powerful about verbally saying, the Lord promises he will never leave you nor forsake you. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us mm-hmm. that God has a plan for you, a hope for your future. He will not harm you. You know, um, God promises to complete the work he started. Mm-hmm. When you're repeating, I can do all things through Christ. Right. You know, yep. do not be afraid for I am with you. Do not be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right right hand. hand. Like those scriptures are not just words, writings and words. Those are promises. That's right. So in those moments where God required me to pour into other people, I was also hearing back the truth that he was giving me, and that was uplifting me. Mm. Um, And then I, I feel as though God needed me to understand hurt, brokenness, and pain at such a deep level so that now I can step into that with other women and other young ladies. He also needed me to understand 
the depths of deception, the depths of spiritual warfare, mm -hmm. how real that is, yeah. and how the enemy can use and is using pornography to attack marriage. There are so many women who were just like, who are just like I was. I was walking, I had no idea that this was even possible. I had no, I didn't even believe my ex-husband was capable of lying. But at every turn, God revealed it. Mm -hmm. He never once came to me and said, hey, I'm struggling with this, or I did this, I'm, I want to ask for forgiveness for this. That never happened through the entire time. He hid everything. He hid everything, but God revealed everything. Yeah. So there was even more growth in that experience for me than it was for him. And I remember crying to my counselor one day saying, why does it have to be this? Why does it have to be my biggest fear? And she said, Fanchon, that's exactly why it has to be this. Mm -hmm. So you can experience how big God is and how faithful he is. Mm -hmm. When it finally all ended, sadly, he chose to choose that life. Hmm. And a lot of people at that time came back and said, well, gosh, are you upset with God or has it destroyed your faith? I said, what? How could it? It actually deepened my faith mm -hmm. because I have now experienced how far God will go to reveal things to you you need to know yes. when you need to know them. So it, it stripped me of wanting to know everything. Being an investigative journalist in, from the beginning of my career, I know how to find out information. Right. But it required me to trust God. I don't need to go searching God. You're going to show me what I need to know when I need to know it. Am I going to receive it is the question. And am I going to respond according to how you are teaching me and how you are calling me to respond in those moments? A lot of that was forgive again. Forgive yeah. again. Were you I able had, to forgive I him? Had, completely. Yeah. I had biblical grounds very early. Yep. And I would have had support had I ended it. But I prayed about that, and I did not feel for me at the point that God was saying, yes, leave. And I understand now why because he needed me to walk through the entire process. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, I can truly say I forgave him very early on. And I started focusing on what does God have in it for me? And it was the most beautiful journey. And so when people said, well, were you, are you disappointed you didn't get the bow at the end? You didn't, because in the beginning I'm thinking God's gonna bring us back together. He's gonna, it's gonna be a credible testimony. We're gonna be able to help other people. And that mm -hmm. was the prayer. That's not what happened based on his choice. But I was obedient in everything that God asked me to do. So I had peace in that. And when people asked me that, I said, no, because I now see that when God says all things work together for good to those who love him and according to his purpose, that is more true than you will ever know. Because I did not understand that there was not ever true repentance at that time. And so when God finally released me from that and I was able to walk away, I had peace beyond any understanding, mm -hmm. unspeakable joy because I'd experienced the true character of who God is and how, how much he loves us. And it was not best for me to be in that continuously because he in the end didn't choose it. He didn't choose to want to live a godly life sure. or want to have a godly marriage mm -hmm. or any of those and things. And he's not meeting you where you are. And so actually I was so grateful mm -hmm. because I said, God, thank you because if that's what the outcome was, I don't want that. That's not my life. And I didn't know that yeah. until he showed me that. And I allowed him mm -hmm. the time. I allowed him to take me through that entire journey as painful as it mm -hmm. was. And coming out of that, um, there's, n there's, I wouldn't wish that experience on my worst enemy. Never, yeah. ever, ever. But I will tell you, if I had to go through that again, to get to where I am and to know God and know mm -hmm. Jesus the way I know him, do I would it do it over again. again. Of course. Of course. And coming out of that, I now understand that I have um, the ability to step into so many of those areas. We have a lot of young men who think that pornography is a joke and a game. Oh, I see. They don't understand that it's literally mm -hmm. poison. Well, it's infiltrated in their gaming. It, it's it's in, everywhere. It's everywhere at a young age yeah. without without young boys even realizing what's being done. The number one um, age group for addiction to pornography among young boys is like 9 to 12 right yeah. now. And yeah. a lot of parents don't know that yet. Of course not. Um, so it's given me, I don't know how God's going to use it fully, but mm -hmm. I know that I've been able to come alongside a lot of women and a lot of men. There are men who overcome it. It's not, I mean, it's a choice yep. to want to continue to dive into something like that. But God is so great. And so faithful. So in terms of how I handled it and walked it out, I was walking out how God called me to. And um, the protection around it was 
was him showing me again his power. Every single person that is now family to me, mm. I didn't know before I went to Indianapolis, but he knew they were there yeah. and he knew I would need them. If I had not done that, I'll say it again, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. I was on a heart monitor during a, during a certain point because I was so stressed out. Yeah. I was having to run his company and work. And, you know, but there was, so I'm just, I'm just grateful. And um, it was the hardest, one of the hardest parts in my life, not the hardest, one of the hardest, but um, one of the most beautiful. And coming out of that, I have true joy and I am thankful for that. And when, when the marriage ended and the divorce was finally final, I kept our wedding picture up for a year mm -hmm. because I knew that the enemy can use bitterness and anger against us of course. to harden our hearts. Mm -hmm. And to make us lose fearful hope and he make, and become act. fearful and, mm -hmm. and become doubtful of yeah. God's grace and love. So I kept that picture up for a year because every time I walked past it, I wanted to be able to pray for him. Mm. And the last thing I told him was, please don't give up on the Lord. Yes. And I could say that with a heart of compassion for him. Mm -hmm. No anger, no bitterness, truly still hoping and praying that he finds his way back to God because... That's a very dangerous place to be. Yeah. You know, there, is, there are eternal consequences for our choices. And so my prayer for him is that he would find God and he would find peace and whatever it is what was pulling on him, um, that he would just surrender. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that, that, that was an important part to me because I did not want to ever have bitterness or ever have unforgiveness or ever have anger. And I can truly say I didn't. When we release something, when we forgive someone who has wronged us, it does not mean we're saying it's okay what they did. Mm -hmm. What it means is... We're releasing ourselves. We're rele well, yeah. And uh -huh. it says, what you did is not okay, mm -hmm. but I am giving you to God. Yes. God was going to handle that. And God will. Because he says that. He promises us that. you know, And we may not see it. It may not happen the way we think. But... We are saying that I'm going to trust, I trust God to handle this so I don't have to carry this. And God tells us that. Right. We are not to carry all those it burdens. It is not our burden. It's too much. Right. So, and if, I, if we hold on to unforgiveness, we're going to suffer the consequences of what comes with unforgiveness. Yes. The burden of that. Well, and it's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual. It, yeah. it permeates, it permeates every, everything. everything in your body. And what I, my message always is, I know there's ladies watching and listening, and there's probably some ladies who can understand what I'm saying is if, if we don't forgive, um, we're, we are going to carry it. And when we do forgive, please remember, you're not saying it's okay what they did. What mm -hmm. you're saying is, God, I trust you to handle this situation right. and to handle this person. We don't have to do that. We can be released of that yes. and we can go on to what God has for us. Well, forgiveness also equates to your name, which is freedom, by yeah. the way. Yeah. I feel like I just want to hug you right oh, now. Oh, thank you. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that, that's, um, that's not an easy story to share. It's very vulnerable yeah. on your part, but incredibly helpful. I hope so. And it, it sort of weaves back into, in the beginning, when you talked about how being a mentor was something that was just put in you and you mm -hmm. wanted to do. And you alluded to your... Um, your foundation, Grit and Grace mm -hmm. yes. Nation. And I, I just love how just, you know, again, God's timing and the way things unravel and the way things it's unfold, amazing. it is, it's amazing and it is necessary. We mm -hmm. don't always see it in the moment, yes. right? We don't understand it yes. in the pain and yes. in the struggle. We can't, we can't get out of that nasty, murky bubble yes. to see what's on the other side. Right. But when you're on the other side, yeah. you realize the purpose, the placement, the intention of all of it. So, you know, having gone through these intense struggles mm -hmm. from shyness and insecurity as a young girl yeah. to now being in a relationship where you are facing, you know, something yeah. unimaginable, um, you still want to reach out and you want to empower and you really want to target an audience yeah. that, that needs it at the right time. And so you have decided to target young girls mm -hmm. who are ripe for encouragement, yeah. to yeah. help them get out of that mm -hmm. fear, out of that insecurity, away from the anxiety. So talk about what yeah. you're doing. Well, I want to be, you know, and I want to be so real about that because, you know, my divorce was final in 2018 and there has been such, all of that was preparation for mm -hmm. 
Grit and Grace, yeah. my nonprofit. Of course. And I just want to encourage everyone, nothing in your life is random. Right. Nothing is random. There was a period in my life where I was making unwise decisions, and I was not listening to the Lord. I never lose, lost my faith, but I was making decisions that were not God honoring. Mm -hmm. And there were consequences for that. And that's why I was prepared when I got married to walk through this a very different way mm -hmm. than maybe other people would have instructed me to. That's why it's so important to make sure you're getting godly wisdom, yep. especially when you're going through things. That's why I, it was kept so private. I didn't really answer that question. I wanted to go back to yeah. that. Um, but a lot of the things I've walked through are things that our young ladies are struggling with. And you and I know that when we can share our wisdom, when we can share what we've learned, we can help young ladies navigate the difficulties of life much better than perhaps we did when we were that age. Sure. Um, and that became a burning passion inside, coming from being introverted and being shy. Um, the mission of Grit and Grace is equipping our young ladies, middle school and high school, with courage to excel and giving them the tools they need to excel in life and in leadership. And that's very intentional in terms of courage because mm -hmm. it takes courage to go against the grain. Of course it does. It takes courage to stand up for your values. Mm -hmm. It takes courage to be modest. It takes courage to choose. And to even identify. To identify, to know what you are about, to know what mm -hmm. you're doing. So what we do is we try and get young ladies, especially as early as we can, because we know our young ladies are dealing with comparison. They're dealing with a lot of negative um, suggestions on social media. Mm -hmm. There's low self-esteem. The numbers right now when it comes to anxiety and depression are at levels we have not seen in this country. It's staggering. And it's these staggering. young girls are being medicated yes. instead of empowered. Exactly. So what we are doing is we, uh, there are a number of things that we do through Grit and Grace. First of all, a lot of people say, well, who's your target? What are your target girls? It's mm -hmm. every girl. Mm -hmm. You can be from the most affluent neighborhood. We've got Grit and Grace girls. Middle class Grit and Grace girls. Underserved Grit and Grace girls. Yep. Why? Because every girl is going to experience difficulty in life. Mm -hmm. It may look different. But all of us are going to have disappointment, we're going to have heartbreak, we're going to have sickness, health issues, whatever comes. It's in those moments that we have the tools to understand it in the context of this is happening to make me, not to break me. Mm -hmm. And when those things happen, we want our girls to have the tools to respond well. What does that take? It takes a sisterhood of other girls who have those same values mm -hmm. and a sisterhood of women like yeah. you and like so many other Grit and Grace mentors that will pour into our young ladies, that will help them network, that will help them grow, that will help them make wise decisions, that will encourage them and inspire them. You can be anything you want to be because mm -hmm. God's already placed those seeds in you. Right. We are all created equal. It does not matter how you start or where you come from. God says we're all created equal. It's the choices you make. You're not a victim. You are a victor. Amen. So we have career preparation. <laughs> We have um, a leadership academy that's online. So we pull girls from all over the country and we teach them, what's your identity? How did God make you? What are your gifts? What are your talents? Self-awareness, mm -hmm. huge. There are women who don't know self, what self-awareness means. Absolutely. Um, managing your emotions, managing stress, resiliency, being coachable. So we're measuring in the beginning of our academy what's in the head and what's in the heart, what's informing decisions. Then we have mentorship programs. We have young people um, who have opportunities to get scholarships. We have a $10,000 mm -hmm. scholarship that we give away every year to a middle school student, to a high school student to help them grow in their leadership. And we also have grants. We don't want anyone to not be able to access um, what we are providing for the girls because of finances. So mm -hmm. we have very gracious sponsors who provide grants for any girl that may have a financial need so that they can become part of the Grit and Grace Leadership Academy. And then we give the girls an opportunity to be honored for doing the right thing yeah. in their communities locally, but also on a national level. Mm. And I, I just, I pour myself into this because had I had something like this, <laughs> would have been a difference there maker for you. There may have been you. some different choices, choices. Of where I definitely would have been more confident. Yes. You know, I would have been more confident um, in terms of who I was and what God was doing in me. And I didn't have to look like everyone else. I didn't have to mm -hmm. act like everyone else. I didn't have to do all of these things. Yeah. I would have had that confidence. So we want to make sure our girls have accesses. And a very important part of this, Dominique, I know you'll be able to understand this, the importance of this is etiquette. Mm. Thank it's, you. It's etiquette. Yeah. It's we have equine therapy that comes in. It's our girls in our in our chapters. We're rolling out chapters across the country right now. We're in the process of that. But we want them to be able to sit down as a group. We remove 
comparison out of our chapters intentionally, but sit together and say, okay, what are we, what cause are we going to support? Mm-hmm. How are we going to give back? How are we going to serve? Okay, now we're going to have etiquette class. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to allow you to practice, to put into practice the leadership skills we're teaching you. And our curriculum, I'm so blessed because the Lord brought this curriculum. I knew what I wanted it to do. We were planning on writing it from the from the beginning, but the Lord brought a curriculum that's used at the highest levels of leadership with some of the Fortune 500 companies, with NFL athletes, D1 athletes, the highest forms of leadership um, coaching, and we have tailor-made that for grit and grace. So we have the data to show that apprehension improves, mm. um, critical thinking improves, managing stress, managing emotion improves. So we have girls who now understand what their life purpose is, who have a mission statement, who understand graceful confidence, yes. poise, elegance, communication. Well, you know us. We're going to be. We're going to talk, teach them about communication skills. You bet. But they know how to do all of these things, and we work with them through middle school, through high school, and we and we stay with them through college. So now we're able to present them to op, to um, corporate opportunities and professional yeah. opportunities, internships, and girls, employers, and they're nailing it. Our girls can walk in. They can sit at a boardroom in a boardroom at a board table and kill it. Mm -hmm. Because they're confident. They know how to navigate. They know how to be a team player. They know how to manage the stress in an environment like that. And that's a critical need right now with a lot of employees. Is your academy a physical place where they go? Is it online? It's online. online. So we pull from girls all across the country, Mm -hmm. and we meet online once a week. And then from there, we are rolling out chapters where the girls get to meet in person and I go around and we talk about them. We do assemblies in schools and we, we step into community organizations. We want to come alongside our young ladies and bring all of these components together. Yeah. Um, so it's open to any girl nationwide. Like I said, enrollment is in um, August and September. It, it models the school year. We do a mother-daughter conference in mm-hmm. June. We'll be doing that in June um, where we bring the moms and the daughters together. Because now we're hearing from moms, well, gosh, we need that. We need the encouragement. Right. We need the encouragement. So we are working on um, the mom version. Program, the mom version. Love that. And we'll be able to bring moms and gr- it's daughters. It's your 2.0. It's 2.0. It yeah. is. And so this June will be our first mother-daughter conference. So we'll be able to bring moms and daughters together. And in a time in life when the world tells you, that's the worst time for your relationship. Don't know. Not it's going to be the most beautiful. It's called Generations of Grit and Grace, Living a Victorious Life. So those moms and daughters will be able to have a shared experience that they'll be able to build on with their daughters. Yes, that's so important at a time and, when, when there's usually a division in that yes, relationship. Yes, yes. Um, we're going to put a link to that. I think it's so important yeah. for, we have so many moms who listen to this podcast, but I love the fact that you're also including them in the program yes. too. So it's, it's, it's not like, here's, here's my kid. I'm just going to cast her off to you, but no, it's, it's integrative and it's something that they can do together. Well, you know what, what was, we did, what I did not expect because literally God gave me this vision for all of this. This is not me. It, it's really me being obedient to a vision he gave me and the team that we have. Yeah. And, um, what what we learned is that the moms are now building a community. Mm-hmm. Our grit and grace dads are building a community, a brotherhood. The moms are building a sisterhood, and the girls are building a sisterhood. I so these it. are lifelong familial family relationships, but also relationships among girls. So when they travel for the summer, they're scheduling how they're going to meet each other. Mm-hmm. How, are they, how are we going to stop in this state to see so-and-so and this person and that person? So that's kind of a neat thing as well. It's a great thing. Um, you know, you and I, we could have a five-hour podcast. I know, I know. So something tells me we're going to have to break this up into <laughs> multiple parts. But what I would like to wrap it up on is this. I think you and I are clear examples to women in midlife that you can absolutely pivot you can find passion. Yes. You can take bold risks. Yes. That God's blessing will show out in any area, phase, and stage right. of your life. Mm-hmm. He He actually surprises us yeah. in the most incredible ways. And it's so fun. And it's <laughs> fun. And so fun is one thing that we will have on on our um, on our show together. And I'm so I excited know. about that. But this is an important topic to address because this is the one thing I hear about from women in midlife, and that is burnout. Mm-hmm. You know, when you sit here and and you listen to us talk, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you've just taken on a new full-time job, yeah. right? To be a morning yeah. news host. Yeah. You have Grit and Grace Nation. That is a full-time it is. gig, right? It is. You know I've got a full-time yes. gig going yes, on do. here. And I've taken on morning show co-host with you. Yes. And 
people, I, I'm already getting these questions. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Yeah. How are you going to get this work-life balance so that you don't burn out? So many women in midlife are burnt out. Yes. It may not necessarily be all career. It can be sandwich generation, yeah. parenting children who yeah. are in college or not quite yet yes. getting into the workforce, caring for aging parents, managing careers within mm-hmm. all of that. So my question to you, and I think we should hold each other accountable yeah, for this, yeah. is how are we going to create that work-life balance so that we don't burn out, yeah. that we that we take advantage of yeah. God's blessings, yeah. but not allow it to run us into the ground and forget about how important it is just for Fanchon That's to right. take care of yeah. Fanchon. Well, What's I, your plan? Do you have one yet? I do. Okay. And I think I had to learn this. This yeah. was part of the preparation for this period of my life. Mm -hmm. And number one, it's go to God first. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I would see all these great things. I want to do this. I want to be poor in here. I want to serve here. I want to do this. And I did, I just did everything. Sure. And I did get burnt out. Mm -hmm. But we were younger. We had more energy then. (laughs) Exactly. So it was okay. (laughs) It wasn't. But it wasn't. (laughs) But we could manage. Yes. Um, But one of the things I was missing was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. When something came to me, God, do you want me to do this? Right. And wait for the answer. So when this opportunity came, I told no one. Mm-hmm. Because it, was, it sounded amazing and looked amazing. Right. But the question was, had I learned what God taught me? So I told no one, and I immediately went to prayer. Mm-hmm. It was about a two-week period. And I said, Lord, I just want to know. Is this you bringing this to me to amplify what you're already doing and to carry me further into the path you have? Or is this a distraction that's been brought to me mm-hmm. that I don't need to be a part of that would, al- that would alter the plan you have for me? Mm-hmm. And until I got that answer, I could not say yes. And I will tell you the beauty of having such a close friendship with Jesus is this. He confirmed it in so many vivid ways Mm -hmm. that I knew that this is what he wanted me to do. Because if I didn't have that, I would not be sitting here. Right. I would not, it wouldn't, it, there would be no amount of money, no amount of anything that would have enticed me to do it if God didn't give me the green light. Because I've been on the other side of those decisions and it doesn't go well. And I know that I have so many young ladies that are now a part of my life. I was never able to be a mom, but these young ladies are like my daughters. And so my first and foremost commitment is to them and to their life and to being an example and coming alongside their families. So if anything is going to interfere with that, it's not for me because I know that God's purpose for me is in that mission, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. So that's the first question, and I would just encourage, I even tell my young ladies in college, they're giving me all the list of what they want to do in the careers. And I said, have you asked Jesus? It's, mm. That's what he wants you to do. Right. That's so critical. A lot of people don't know how to answer that question. Yeah. Meaning. They, and he they, will show you. He will. But people don't know what that. What does that feel, mean? What does it mean? What does it feel I will, like? I will try and verbalize that. Yeah. When you have something that you're going to do, and this is, and see, that's why it's, it's spending time mm-hmm. with the Lord is so important. So you can start to recognize his voice and how Correct. he speaks to you. He made you. He knows exactly how to speak to you, how to communicate with you. And for me, if I have a, a little pause or something that doesn't feel right about something. When you feel like you're trying to talk little, yourself into something. I'm trying to talk myself into mm-hmm. it or that little, mm, like right in here. Yep. Then I know to pause. With this situation, I went into prayer. There was never that, "Mm." hmm, every question that I came up with, it was answered, or God would show me, or it would be in the scripture, or it would be in something that my pastor said at church. I mean, the way God confirms things to you, you will know when it's him. Mm -hmm. And when you make the decision, you'll feel a release of a heaviness or a burden. Did I make the right decision? You'll know. If you make the wrong decision, you'll know know that. And the question in that point, are you going to push through and still do what you want, or are you going to be surrendered to what he wants? Mm -hmm. So the other part in terms of holding each other accountable, what I have learned and how do you balance work and life? You put him first. Mm -hmm. So my most precious time every day is when I get up, get my cup of coffee, I sit in my chair and that's my time with the Lord. That's the time I'm in the Bible every day. And that's when he shows me, teaches me, reveals me. It's the most, it is the most 
joyful time of my day because Agreed. you never know how God's going to show up. And he I, is just so loving. He's funny some days. He's, or some days he's got to correct me. He's got to be, you need to repent for this or whatever it is. But that is the most precious time. And that is what I would usually when I was younger, mm -hmm. that would be the first thing that I'd put aside. Right. But it's foundational now. It's foundational and it's necessary. And the earlier we learn that, the earlier we teach our girls that, mm -hmm. um, the, the faster they're going to get to what their purpose and passion is and the more they'll be able to do. As well as keep the right spirit and attitude yes. throughout. Yes. That's, you know, it, it's, I always say this, our morning conversation with God isn't just one and done, but it's, it's a reminder that it yes. is something that has to be with us throughout the day. Every These, minute of every day. Every minute to check us, to balance us, yeah. our responses to things, our thoughts yes. to things. Is this me? Yes. Or is, is this, this coming from a yes. place of, you know, of, of the natural or is this coming from a place of the spiritual? Yes. And it's it's that continuum yes. is how I see it. Yes. And and I hope you, you we are so similar. <laughs> now, the, now the question. Okay. So here's the question now, guys. And you guys can help us with this. Now that we have to be up so early, yes. am I going to move that time to the evening or am I going to keep it in the morning? Because right. So that's what I'm trying to figure out now yes. because I love it in the morning because I start my day. Right. Or is it going to be in the car? Is it going to look different? I don't know, but I yeah. know that that part has to still be yes. there. And I'm going to have to build everything around then because I'm going to have to be in bed by, I think, 8 o'clock. I'm thinking 8, 8.30, the latest. So, yeah, we're going to try and phase it in, I think. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm try I haven't succeeded yet. I'm like, I'm going to go to bed at 10. It's yeah. 11. You know, I'm trying to, like, right. phase it in, so... Yeah. But that's, and I think that also, and we'll wrap it up with this. Yes. Um, a woman needs a plan we and have have a plan. you have to have a plan and, and yes, put God first, but he also expects us to be wise. He has yes. given us wisdom. And so we have to make wise choices in yeah. our lives in order to be able to handle what it is that he has given us. And Vench and I would both agree that this is a unique gift it at is. a very unique time in our lives where it was completely unexpected and yeah. could easily tip us into overload. And so now we have to take our wisdom and our knowledge, and it's imperfect. It's imperfect. And it will be in flux, and we'll, we yeah. will figure it out. That's but right. But I feel grateful that I've got um, a compadre here, comadre, <laughs> um, you know, to be able to walk uh, in this journey together. Yeah. And we get to share, you know, what's what's working for you, yeah. what's working for me. And and we will make we will make this a wonderful, yeah. beautiful it's gonna be amazing. machine. And it's going to be amazing. And we know that because I know all those things we have figured out. Yeah. Because... I went back and I asked him. He wouldn't have told me yes if he hadn't figured all that stuff That's out. That's correct. So we know mm -hmm. that it's going to be figured out. We can't wait for you guys to be on this journey with us because yeah. he's put us here intentionally. It was him. It's not us that put us here. Oh, it's no. definitely him. We know that even with the way we have gotten to know each other. Um, so that means that there may be struggles or maybe things, but we're where exactly where he wants us to be. If correct. you are exactly where God wants you to be, which you are, if you're asking him all the time, mm -hmm. he will meet you there and he'll help you figure those things out. So yeah. that could be a very, that could be a point of anxiety, but it's not. No, no, not at because all. Because he's got it. Exactly. And it's, and that's where the peace lies. Yes. So anyway, I am Yay. peace because peace. <laughs> this, this has been so much fun. Like I said, she'll be back I, again. I think there's just so much to talk through. I know that once our morning show that begins. That was a lot to talk through. I'm I didn't even plan on going there, but he obviously wanted hey, me to go there. So he speaks to us he in does. every moment and, yeah. and opens up what it is that we're supposed to reveal when yeah. we are supposed to reveal it. So I thank you. You know, this platform is based on honesty, transparency, and vulnerability. And I've had to go there in many, many uncomfortable yes. and difficult ways over the past couple of years in my life. But it's like you said, it's brought me closer to him. It's brought me closer to you. Yeah. You know, we are no different. No. Than you. Mm -hmm. We are no different. Mm -hmm. Everybody has struggles. Everybody has pain and difficulties that we have to overcome. And if we can't be honest and open enough to yeah. share that, then it creates isolation and it creates this sense of, I must be the only one going through this. Why is my life so horrible? Or, and you're not the only and one. And you're not the only one. So, you know, we will keep these conversations open, honest, and frank. We will share our journey yeah. continuously with you. I want to have Fanchon back on. I, like I said, there's so much more to talk about. But most importantly, I also want to share 
And if you just stay with uh, both of us on our social media yes. platforms, uh, you can follow her at Fanchon Stinger, yes. F-A-N-C-H-O-N-S-T-I-N-G-E-R. Um, we will, it's our mission. Everybody keeps asking, yeah. how, how do I find you? Where yes. do I find yes. you, right? That, that's the question. So that's coming next to let you know, yes. no matter where you are, this is a nationwide morning show. Oh. So, which is mind blowing. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I should has, also has, say. What? The, um, if you do want information about Grit and Grace, it's thegritandgracenation.org. Thegritandgracenation.org. The grit and the link will be in the YouTube video as well as on um, Apple, yeah. Spotify, and wherever yes. people listen to platforms. Because I want to get a lot of women and families connected to what you're doing. Yeah. You know, your little side hustle, which was like your main <laughs> hustle. But now it's, well, it's yeah. yeah. You know what I realized? Mm-hmm. And I'll just end with this. Everything that's happened in my life from the moment that I was born was all preparation yeah. for, for grit, this, for, for grit right and now. grace, and for this. Yeah. And other people would say, oh, it's about TV, oh, it's about this, oh, it's about whatever else you're doing. No, yeah. everything in your life is there for a purpose and a reason. Nothing's random. And whatever God has for you, he's preparing you to get there. So never live, lose hope, never mm-hmm. give up, and never lose your faith, because he is with you even in the lowest moments. He's right there. And he will show you. He will. Mm -hmm. And he wants to use you to be an example. He wants to use you to share your wisdom and to, to spread his word. And that's what I love about these platforms. That's what I love about just the commonality that you and I have is that we are, and people will always say this, you're not afraid to talk about your faith. And I'm like, afraid. It's the first thing I'm going to talk about because <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it, it was I, exactly. <laughs> it's why everything is. So, so I'm, I'm grateful that there is that comfort, but again, um, Fanchon Stinger, my co-host morning on Merritt street. Yeah. I am so grateful for you. You I'm are, for you, you are a gift from God. What a, what an amazing, you know, in this business, co-hosts are like arranged marriages. You know, <laughs> you don't get to pick them, but you're hopeful that it's going to be a good one. And I could not have picked a better partner. Yeah. For thank this you. project, and yeah. I'm I'm so excited to see our friendship grow. Me too. So Me thanks too. again, and I can't wait to share with people the fact that God actually picked this, yeah. and we can share with people how we know that. But yeah, later. exactly. But later. Yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I know you enjoyed getting to know Fanchon. How can you not? She is such a love. What a wonderful, wonderful woman, just steeped in faith and inspiration and beauty and the ability to overcome. And that's what we talk about. A lot of what we talk about here on Over 50 and Flourishing. So guaranteed she will be back. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, I love to read what you want to see on this platform. So please, if you want more Fanchon, say more Fanchon. Um, If you want anything, any kind of direction, health, wellness, inspiration, whatever it is, I look forward to those comments below. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to a podcast, please remember to rate, review, subscribe, and share me with those that you know and you love. Um, I love doing this. I love having an ability to have these conversations and to to get us to think and to get us to know one another better and to feel a sense of connection and a sense of hope and inspiration in this stage of our lives. You know, 50 is, for me, I'm 56. This decade has been a launching pad and a starting point for so many glorious things in my life. So I want you to know that and to feel empowered by it and blessed by it as well. So we will see you next week on Over 50 and Flourishing. Over 50 and Flourishing.